Hello there everyone and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Michael Lover, but we're playing as the Legion of Broadfeld and we're currently doing a Golden Dawn. We've got some comments to go through as well though. Communism is not the only threat to our lives. We cannot blindly trust our neighbors either. Communists are not, as some of them may see our weakness and pounce on us like vile beasts. Broadfeld must stand above all and maintain peace and order in the evil Abbey Alley. Our griffins must be taught to beware of the foreigner and salute the golden banner of our nation. Nice. How about a Spock? Oh no. Supposed to have a gambit, but we never know, knew about the gambit, which we did talk about last time too. But oh well. Ah yes, keep going up, keep going up. So good. Ah, a Spock. Something had changed when Clozu over the years. Uh, Tomado had noticed it during the Civil War and tried to intervene and save his father from madness, but it was too late. Clozu's heart had become dark and bitter, unable to truly trust anyone. All the troubles during his reign were not his fault, he thought, but the fault of others. Nobles had taken advantage of his open trade policies. The peasants he had personally liberated only suffered more, and the order he had restored after the famine required him to hoard power, which made him de Democrats and Communists bitter. So, so bitter. That the Catholic murdered his beloved wife, his beautiful queen. The only ones to receive even a sliver of his trust were his soldiers, who saw him as a figurehead of the fatherland and to receive the blessing of the goddess Eviliana herself. But him, they're nothing but pawns. At this point, almost everyone was. So, when yet another setback occurred during his troubled reign, his reaction was calm. As riders filled the streets, led by the disgruntled nobility and his own son, Prince Tomato, he prepared an emergency meeting with his generals. There were no fear, no doubt in his eyes. Now he seemed pleased with the recent events, as if he could take advantage of them. Ion Suem Escu, his most trusted general, spoke first, my dear conductor. Leader, what should we do? Thousands of protesters have occupied or burned down factories and government buildings across the nation. They demand reform and liberal liberalism. Clearly poisoned by traitors, revolutionary thought should order the army to eradicate them. General Alexandru Lewski shook his head. No, you fool, that would lead to another civil war, surely. We must be careful, as if we were handling a bomb, they need to be dealt with, but with a more lenient claw. Clearly looked at each, each group in turn, completely silent, clasping his claws, and he finally revealed his plans. Crush them? Do not use excessive force. Crush them. King's Gambit. Which is the way most of you voted for last time. Which I did ask you last time whether King's Gambit or no. It's clear that many are unhappy with the recent changes, but those who resist will realize their grave error too late as they are sacrificed for the good of good. The patrols made them expendable pawns, after all. The glory of the broad is vastly more valuable than they are. Which will open up this part of the tree and lock this part of the tree, so. Crush the opposition. Well, we already have no stability, so. Persian ability. The lazy, greedy aristocrats are selfish dudes. They're responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands because the famine of 995 was entirely their fault. Now that they rightfully fear the king and stand against him, the time for justice has finally come. So the comments include, um, the question of war seems to handle encirclements and lack of supplies differently than vanilla, so maybe, um, maybe not. That's just an observation. Um, someone says, uh, you should play as a Colthaginian Republican go down the ascendancy path. Great, it's a great story. Um, you might want to play other paths you haven't played on the Western continent before they do them or update them, such as Daybreaker and her Solar Empire. Which remind me about that. Remind me to do the Solar Empire, which just sounds like a lot of fun. So, um, so says the poor king feels sorry for this Griffin. I apologize for how raging I got in the first episode. Um, I just was very frustrated, and I get frustrated somewhat easily. So, that's my fault about that. So, so says can you, cool another EAW <clears throat> video. So, uh, can you do a Hippogriffian supremacy path next? Well, we'll see. Maybe if it remind me. So says can you do a Kothva or a Sinisi run in Kothag? Good gameplay, keep it up. Someone else says, can you do a Griffonian Empire run, which I think I've done before, or run where you use Necrotech to bring the Emperor back? I don't know anything about that, but with the Gambit. The widespread unrest did not come to close you as a surprise. He knew traitors in his country were plotting to once again ruin his beloved homeland, but as, as always. But now he'd deal with them once and for all. No more would nobles, communists, or even his own son oppose him and sabotage his rule, unaware of what was best for him. He would get a sweet revenge and make every single foe suffer. Besides vengeance and justice, the king desired to benefit from the destruction of his foes. He put them to work and bleed them dry so his country would become stronger. That was needed if he wanted to accomplish his ultimate plan of saving the world. Broadfeld shall prevail. We didn't need political power, that's right. We didn't need it. Where we're headed, we don't need political power. Um, hunt down the prince. The prince has shown his true colors. He has betrayed his father, and his homeland is nothing more than a despicable traitor who spits on his mother's grave by being a communist sympathizer. Let be known that King Kozu has no son. Someone says, can we have another Star Wars mod or something other than TNO? Well, eventually, yeah, probably. I do love TNO way too much, but still. Still. Uh, we do have a whole whopping 14 divisions, which are not terrible, but not, not fantastic. Which does suck. But purge nobility. Purge, purge, purge. Because we will crush the opposition and declare martial law too. Which will be good for po recruitable population factor. Or extended martial law. But hurts consumer goods really badly. Um, the state of emergency cannot be lifted. The up uprising proves it. It must remain in full effect as long as possible so, in order to so order is maintained and our nation remains vigilant and ready to fight. Because right now we're suffering from uh, the Golden Dawn. We have a lot of daily uh, Golden Guard support. King's Gambit. So, uh... Civil War aftermath is uh, 
It's really not good. It's really not good. Kingdom of Zafizia. The vast Vias. Looking pretty thick. Pretty darn thick. Too thick for us. The end of the nobility. Long before Clan Zo, Cluzo, and united the three principal into in the kingdom, hundreds of nobles from families dominated pride when known a huge swaths of land and hundreds of oh, look at that. Uh, thousands of serfs. The princes ensured their loyalty by granting them privileges which made them only stronger. When Cluzo rose to the same throne of Broadfeld, the families expected everything to remain the same, but they were wrong. To Cluzo, the nobles were nothing more than parasites and leeches, obstacles to his rule to, he had to overcome. So shortly after becoming king, he began to implement reforms, abolishing serfdom and confiscating the land. He did not need to fear the nobles. For an ally with the merchants of Assyria and Kivisin, whose loans enabled him to hire professional soldiers loyal to him alone. But even the nobles prevailed, for they took advantage of uh, lax trade laws and foreign deals of profit greatly from agricultural exports. Soon, the peasants were unable to commute or compete with aristocratic estates and had to sell their lands, and the power of their nobility continued to grow. Now it's time to put an end to this. Clozu thought he should have done this long ago. The Golden Guard death squads were summoned and gathered to hear the rule order. Clozu told them to find every single aristocrat and bring them all to justice. The golden shorts hailed him, shouting, Long live the king, and went out to execute his command. Nobles across the country were hunted down without mercy. Barons, marquees, lords, and all counts all captured and lynched. Those who were leading the uprising were shot by snipers or murdered along the, during the night. Some of the personal retinues guarding them, so the Golden Guard brought machine guns and armored trucks to crush the nobles' defenses. Fighting was bloody, and the king's griffins took many casualties, but in the end, out of several thousand nobles in the country, only a few hundred remained. And even more of those were fleeing for their lives, abandoning their opulent manners as they were looted and burned by the fanatical golden shirts. Good or a dense. Who needed them? Obviously not us. Of course, we'll extend martial law, we'll hunt down the prince, and crush the opposition. Or total, total con oh my god, total war cut me. Oh god. Nice. The Royal Legions. That's our uh, organization, the Road of the Vanquished, Blood of the Reds, Permanent War Economy. I think we know peace and pry win. Uh, when, as long as the Communist Minister prevails abroad and our neighbors, who we used to trust, turn against us and plan our destruction. The economy will be nothing more than an engine of total war, geared to supply defenders and ensure the survival of our survival in these dark, dark days. Oh boy, can't wait. Legionary Broadfeld. Oh, we have a thing here. Train your butt off, because you're going to die in, in the end anyways. We definitely don't have enough divisions for this view up front now. We've got a lock. Even supplies are probably really bad. Just in total martial law. The worst is over, which is good. Helps consumer goods quite a bit. Actually, this hurt out quite a bit. Wow. That's not as bad as it was earlier. It's not really bad there. Oh, minus two is doesn't look good, though. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Not down that there, Prince. Our burns have got to go. Yeah, consumer goods have got hit really hard. Mobilizing a little bit more, but that's not very much. Very nice. Oh, is just going fine. What else is going on? Griffin and Republican Empire killing each other. Um, Jarl Dum Dolly Confederation is killing themselves too. Uh, Indian National Bloc versus the Dear La Restorationists. Middle Sea Treaty. And United you know, Points Alliance, and these guys are playing up here too. No, California, and Stalingrad. <laughs> yeah, this is the. Uh... Oh, that's gonna require more costs, that sucks. A new era, eh? Lose even more stability and political power? So be it. We only have 8% stability, that's okay. Quickly change minus 2%. Who needs stability in times like these? The Golden Guard prepared their finest assassins for a special secret mission given by the king himself. They needed to take care of the leader of the uprising, Prince Tomato, who had committed an act of high treason and thus needed to be punished. Uh, Prelate Denali promised to forgive them for their sins and give Arcturus his blessing. The infiltrators wore civilian clothing and joined the large protesting crowd in the center of the Kvissim. Prince Tomato was standing on his box and holding his passionate speech to them, saying the king had gone mad with power and should abdicate. Protesters shouted, Briad in peace, along with the democratic slogans. The assassins hid their disgust well and made their way through the masses. The prince had no bodyguards and was surrounded by the most ardent supporters. One of the infiltrators, a female griffin, shouted how much she loved and admired the griffin, or the, uh, admired the prince, and how he should become the benevolent king. As the was distracted by her, another assassin crept behind the prince and kicked the box from under his paws. He fell on the ground and the crowd grasped in shock. The assassin then kneeled beside him, worried in his face, asking if he was okay. Tomato not mumbled that his back hurt, but it was fine otherwise. Tears in his eyes, the assassin embraced the prince, begging for forgiveness. Tomato soon took his final breath as a concealed syringe entered his flesh. The assassin pretended to be shocked and said the prince's head had hit the pavement, and it needed, me needed immediate medical assistance. Dozens of griffins wailed in terror and came to aid him and to carry him to the hospital. Little did they know it was too late. 
As the assassination took place, King Klazu visited his wife's tomb in the temple of Aviliana. He wept, saying their son had betrayed them and apologized for being a bad father who let their child fall so low and kiss the tombstone several days later. News spread that the prince had died. King Klazu announced that he would that should he pass away as well, General Ion Siamoscu would assume control of the country. The royal Broadfeldian line of de Casal would be extinguished, but at least Pride would have a strong and legitimate leader. Long live the king! You must do what you must. That's why you have more than one son. And favor at least one of them until one of them dies. You never know what you might do. Um, yeah. Crush the opposition. The protesters think their demands are reasonable, but they also think their widespread shortage is just a sabotage is justified. They've all resorted to barbarism and become criminals, and criminals shall not go unpunished. Oh boy, it's getting rough. Woe to the vanquished, huh? The Red Pass languished uselessly in the prison camps awaiting the punishments. Holding trials for the thousands of prisoners would take more and more years? Why bother? There's no that they are all guilty of high treason, therefore they'll be put to work to rebuild their homeland while which ravaged and just which they ravaged and destroyed. Those who complain and resist will receive no mercy in the Royal Legions. A berserk charge, huh? The army should become the bride of Broadfeld. Uh, there's nothing more honorable than being a soldier and bravely fighting for the king and country. Many more soldiers. Uh, will join the ranks of the military, ready to save our nation from the flames of civil war and invasion, of course. Permanent war economy. Oh, yes, please. Nice. Lord of the Vanquished, Blood of the Reds, Shadowy Skyline. While Prywin is now secure from within, dark clouds of war gather in the sky, we must prepare for the final ultimate struggle against countless enemies in the world. We should not save us. When the foe encroaches upon us, may they be swiftly crushed by our might. Opening moves have been made, now the game could truly begin. Oh. We're just in the pre-opening uh, pre stages, huh? Cool. Ah, I up Terra, which I, have, I, play, I think I have to play, play some. Oh wait, Stone Palisade. Fortification expert. Ah, that makes sense, yeah. I have played some. I hope the, uh, oh, committing to a project. Invisible state. Oh, oh, oh. I hope these countries get more content, because it seems like a lot, a lot of fun down here. Even though it's like in the desert, and the desert kind of sucks to play him. Sometimes. Fall of Vector. Uh, oh, well, there you go. They lost. They're puppeted. Um, yeah, they just have generic book for now. Central African Empire. Keria. Uh, Delangio. Delanigo. Oh, they're really small compared to the Republic of Nova Graponia now. Heinrich Rudtail, eh? Pantusushenko. They're breaking the protest. In every town city in Prywin, the large and angry crowds of griffins had gathered to protest closes to Spada Cool and the lack of reforms to heal the country from the wounds of civil war. The demonstrations had quickly turned violent. Fires were set, barricades were built, and the military factories uh, had sabotaged and quick and organized strikes. It was clear that this uprising had been well prepared and planned. If another civil war was to be to be prevented, clean and Klazu knew how to avoid the mistakes he made last time and be swift and ruthless. Golden Guard death squads, known as gold shirts, have been trained for weeks now and were sent out like hounds to eradicate pockets of resistance. The military has ordered to guard the arsenals and close the western border because years ago, communists had looted armies and smuggled weapons from the lawless creeper mountains which would allow them to resist. The Golden Guard was brutally efficient. Large crowds were scattered with gas weapons. Leaders such as Enrico Chivaldori were assassinated and heavily armed patrols maintained order in the streets. Pikes of iron were set up alongside the Cavistan and City Road, and hundreds of prisoners were impaled on them. Thousands of others were sent to labor in the mines of Tim Sor. Word was spread of these actions spread terror and doubt among the resistance, and soon enough the opposition was dissipating. Countless griffins dropped their placards and returned home in fear. Many soldiers and Golden Guard members have been killed or wounded in the fighting, but their brave sacrifice will be bringing back peace and stability. Order has been restored. See, we know exactly what we're doing here. Look at that, we got one man part two. In the end. War of the Vanquished, of course, and the Royal Legion would be very good as well. I really want to know what the Blood of the Reds is like. And then the Reds are nice. It's looking definitely better for us. Uh, ravaging Hunger. The ongoing famine continues to ravage the countryside. Many are dying. There's not reports of Griffins resorting to cannibalism in order to stay alive. It's expected the situation will improve anytime soon. It's a disaster. Uh, is there anything we can do about that? I don't think there's anything we can do, is there? I guess reorganize the army. That doesn't really help out. Oh! Forest Street. Oh, poverty. Oh, this would definitely be good. Get over in the Port of City, But Anything about famine? Pneumatic tools are good to do. I don't see anything about famine, but we could open up the ports. Defensive approach, you know. Live all the forestry? Out of all the myriad materials needed for the reconstruction effort, wood stands above all else. By investing in sawmills and nationalizing the forest companies of the Krauya and Qual. Yeah, we can begin mass production of cheap yet versatile lumber. And after the reconstruction is over, we'll have a strong forest industry ready to make profit off of. I get a free city for 40 days, that's not bad. 
Oh boy, one a day is not good, but blood of the raids. Out of all the traitors in the prime wind. King Kozu, despite the community communist the most. Years ago, the scum ruled really his plan to save the country from the ravages of famine and unrest by starting a bloody and brutal civil war. From which his tourists their homeland in half, and worst of all, they murdered his dear wife. La 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 last act alone made Kozu seethe with pure wrath. At first, he wanted to be just and give every red prisoner a fair trial, but he had realized how long this would take and how expensive it would be, so instead he decided to implement the final solution to the Red Menace. Kozu sent the military to empty the prison camps, and escort the Red Rats to heavily protected labor camps in Timsor, but Jerusalem had been prepared for them. There, just what prevailed, and the bands felt would be put to work, helping rebuild the country they had destroyed by working the mines, of course. It's supposed to be punishment, so the prisoners would receive no luxuries. Favored to meet or quarters would be punched most severely. Resistance eradicated. For any months, the situation seemed dire, many believed another civil war would break out, or that King Kozu would abdicate and flee the country in terror, letting Prince Tomato to succeed him and begin a new age of problem. The King had, been pro had proved the doubters wrong. Have secured that the complete loyalty of the military and the zealous Golden Guard to use them like hamsters to crush uprising before it escalated any further. The king also used the opportunity to make himself and the country stronger, expanding the mining operations to Temsor, and boosting a recovery effort with forced labor reforms. Now the order had been restored just like in 1001, when he declared a state of emergency. Will's order of the king rejoiced. I knew he would turn things around. With all opposition to his absolute rule completely eradicated, nothing stood in the way of his glorious reign, which would make Prime great again. Great again. Broadfeld prevails. An operation. Oh, uh, this is one. Operation. Horizons. Beyond the horizons of our enemies plotting against us, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike and enslave our nation. Never again shall Prime be involved in the flames of chaos and kneel in front of the foreign despots. Our borders must be scared and our enemies crushed before it's too late. Long the king, Broadfeld above all. We're going to get operations, uh, horizons. But we're going to go down here because we want fields of gold. Re requires to open the port of Sidia. The old capital of the Principality City has always been the largest and busiest port in Pride when the war however made foreign traders abandon it and forced to conscript many local fish aggress. Now that peace and order have been restored, merchants of fishers can get back into business. We'll repair the port, lower trade tariffs, and ease taxation of fish markets, so it's helping the economy recover. Replace low poverty with mild poverty, which is not bad. I guess even within fields of gold. Decades ago, Broadfield was the richest rice basket of Grofilnia. However, this reliance on the rice caused a great famine in 995 ALB after a blight struck or the communist claims the famines would follow the king's policies as pure propaganda. Sound restored the golden fields of gold, which already distributed farmland or to confiscate from the reds and give wheat, barley, and or barley and oat seeds to the new owners. Yeah. Reduce the risk of famine, replace risk of famine with severe famine with famine, which is better, which we like. And I'll probably do new schools across the nation, maybe. hundred ways to make bread. It's gonna take a while to get down all the way down here. Um I guess new schools, because as much as I want to live in prosperity, ooh, that'd be pretty good. Finish a dam would be nice too. All this stuff is very good to do though. Um, Prolet Donald, in the Kidalurgy, are grateful to us for saving them from God's communism who wish to eradicate religion and create a secular state. Therefore, they are more than willing to cooperate with us in the education of our populace. To establish temple schools where our ignorant subjects can be taught to read, count, and respect God and kings. Our political power too would be good. Operation Horizon, so. After years of internal conflict, the country has become weak, and neighboring countries have noticed this. Some support the GLA during the civil wars, others mustering their armies even now. Broadfield must assert its dumps over its weaker, lesser neighbors who plot against it. Our armies and envoys must be prepared. With Penner's sword, we'll secure our borders and ensure we retain our freedom. The gods are with us. Zafsia, what happened earlier over here? Because they were doing quite well. These guys are doing even better now. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but that doesn't look very good for them. And then, 100 ways to make bread? Royal printing presses in Sidia, Laurios, and Kvesin have been tasked with printing hundreds of thousands of copies of a new book. Worried about the finest culinary minds of Prywin. Explains in detail how to make various types of bread from various variety of crops. The Gal contain illustrations of simple writing that our farmers can read with ease. Oh, the fourth principle team. Lucians do not share culture and heritage, and the White Crest were bitter rivals of the Kazoos Kazaus for centuries. Now that Kazoo is a king, we must finally recognize his authority and bend their, to their needs in the vassalage. If they do not, they clearly want to remain our enemies in case we will utterly destroy them. Secure Sidia. Cities are large and most prosperous city, but it is close to the eastern border. Greedy Griffins and Griffiths surely covet its wealth. We must ensure they do not throw in our precious crown jewel and taint the holy Evie River with their filthy claws. Eviliana protects us from the heretic race. Or er, er, rats, rats, yeah. Um, let's go to the west. Black Hollow. We take Salmark. Salmark was granted to the prince of Broadfell 200 years ago by the emperor himself, who had seized it from the pathetic Minotaurs. Shortly after the civil war began, the despicable uh, Sinolicia sent his army to occupy the region, claiming to protect local civilians from the ravages of war. But even after peace, it came to remain in the enemy claws. We had no option but to take what is route for the secure Kvesin. Kvesin, the city, or the capital of our freedom kingdom, allows on the eastern border and is thus vulnerable. The Griffinian, ra Griffinian raid during the civil war proved that the Zafizin savages cared little for their oath and could no longer be fully trusted. Uh, we must never allow enemies to cross the Holy Evi River. Our eastern border must be secured from Cossack attacks. So. We, de we definitely want to do this. All right, everyone. So now we've gone to war. We've manually justified the Griffiths 
Sud Southern Cotton and Company, which we are outnumbered, but I did do uh, some finagling. Let's see if we can actually do okay against them. Um, it's not going to go very well for us, so uh, we'll see. Uh, part of this is not going to go very well. Um, the cities are the largest, most prosperous city, but it's close to our eastern border. Greedy Griffins and Griffiths already covered its wealth. We must ensure that we not threaten. They do not threaten our precious crown jewel and taint the holy heavy river with the filthy claws. If I land protect us from the heretic rats, reorganize the army. The royal army that helped stagnate for that has stagnated for centuries was forced to adapt rapidly as the civil war erupted. Now there's peace, but we must continue to form our battered forces into a proper military, mili modern military, strong enough to oppose any domestic or foreign threats and offensive for approach. The common skill were not being with idle twiddling of thumbs, but with a decisive action or savage blows, such as tactics gave us victory in the civil war. Only give us victory in the future war we must fight. Broad foes the kingdom of brave wars who are not afraid of, bo of the bold offensives through enemy lines, which hopefully we can achieve, but you know. Oh god. Yeah, honestly, like, this is on ahistorical, so this type of crap is just unacceptable, and, like, I'll be honest, I'm probably going to use some cons commands to, like, make it more balanced, because I we can't deal with this. We literally just do not have the divisions for this, which is complete crap, since, you know, it's almost impossible to play this nation. <laughs> it's really tough playing this nation, my god. Uh, Beats of Steel, which is okay, because we want to do armor, but we just don't have the industry for it, so. Um, we'll probably go with uh, White Flowers, Nassim Dam, Mason of Nisidio. As approaches with us and with intriguing plans for a project he calls NASA or National Action to Secure Our Modernization. The construction of a hydroelectric dam on the Pryor River, which will be able to produce many megawatts of energy, will only be difficult, expensive, and time consuming to build. Mason says it will take care of everything as long as we provide the workers. Finish the dam. While well, we live in prosperity. With the foreign merchant ships arriving in the city of Fishers catching fish in the Bay of Salt, our unemployed is conscripted to work on the White Flower. Dam and houses being rebuilt, lumber from Lvov. We'll quickly begin to recover. Much work remains to be done, but the seeds have been planted from the golden flower shall sprout and eventually blow. All right, everyone. So I took out the other nation. I mean, it was extraordinarily, like, if I recorded, it be, could have been pretty freaking frustrating. It was not very fun, I'll be honest. It wasn't very fun trying to take them out. Um, yeah. At this point, being on ahistorical and our industry being god-awful, uh, there's there, there's really no point just showing you what, what, what went on, I'll be honest. Like, because it was just, it's kind of a grind, to be honest. And I hate grinds. I really hate grinds. Even though that's... You know, it is what it is, but still. Uh, but this Emperor Grover the First was the first group to unite the lands of the Evie, Evie Valley under one banner, but he was a foreigner. When the empire's collapsed, the valley was divided once more, perhaps an ambitious and we had a rule could change that. The new nation uh, now rise from the ashes of war, and many the desperate people of Evie stand together finally. Form the nation. We know it's the dominion of Evie. Nice. Evie dominion. Which sucks that we had to use. Basically, I used some sort of consequence to uh, get to this point, but. Today, the Griffins of the oh, uh, Evie Valley, Evie Valley, see and united as one. A new nation has been established, uniting all lands commonly, known as the Griffonian Frontier. The original was uni last united many years ago by an outsider, Emperor Grover the First, but now as a local leader has done the same. In the recent history, Evie has gone through many troubles, famine, revolution, and war. Except for the Evie Va Valley, with the rice fields of pride, one of the vast steppes of Griffia, the beautiful castle of Lucy, and the rich traces of Griffiths have become one. Now the Evians, or Evians, are united under together against the powerful neighbors which prey on them. Peace in the Evie Valley, remarkable. Um, so, for all sparks, get a new flame. For all new sparks, get a new flames. That looks pretty good overall. And then, we'll carve a future through the enemy. Our borders are a bit secure, but a great deal and terrible threat remains. Communism. We do not act. It'll slowly spread like cats across the world before finally reaching us. We must take the initiative to save the world from the Red Menace. Well, we'll see if we can actually do that. But yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the world was god awful. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't fun. It really wasn't fun. Um, what has this guy got? Anything for us here? No? Okay. That's not cool. Um, Resource-wise, we got a couple guns. I just wish we had a bigger industry. Yeah, I'll never choose uh, mobile warfare for uh, this any nation around in this area because just you just don't have the industry for it. But we have temple schools, which is nice. We have the Golden Legions, of course. We have total war economy. We've got extended martial law. Expand role laboratories. I really want to see what this one's all about because we got to do all that stuff too. But um, after the war, I mean, all this stuff. This is just. If it's just like blueprints, it's not very fun. You know, it's okay, but like, I prefer like uh, offensive doctrine. That sounds very nice. Sounds like fun. You lose more organization, but you get more infantry attack and motorized attack and lots more attack, but still. Um, so we have magical weapons, adopt new training methods, expand the draft, Regal Academia, Academia de Officeri. Of it's not bad, but I don't know, it's because you use more pizzazz here. What else we got right here? So I increase. Uh, I don't mind getting this one, but it requires all the following, which takes forever. You get more resources. Is that it? I'm more interested in that one. Uh, what else we got around here? More textbooks, less propaganda. 
Our cookbook campaign has proved to be successful, therefore it's clearly one of the primary educational books and uh, textbooks. Uh, instead of just propaganda, libraries should be built across the country and crammed with knowledge filled books which our students can use for low cost. Repair our oil wells, a terrible marsh is a cursed land inhabited mostly by tribal griffins and magical monsters, but it's far from worthless, as beneath the marshes lie vast oil deposits. The wells were badly damaged during the war, with funds from a recovering account we can invest in repairing them. Finish the dam. Why flowers, new dams, nearly completion will be officially opened in a grand ceremony with which the king will be attending. Then ask some projects will be a groundbreaking success. Thousands of homes and dozens of factories will be powered by the dam. That's cool. It's good. Rejoin integration, more stability would be nice. Yeah, I'll go and grab that. I mean it's not looking great here, but still better than nothing. Uh resistance wise, it's it's going down. Oh, do we have resistance here too? What? No, we shouldn't. Compliance is still slowly going up, which is nice. Um Yeah. Compliance. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Once we core more stuff, it'll be better, but like still. I mean we have to fight with Oh my god, that's huge. Also, the Cathedral Republic is here. We could have gone to war with Asterion, but that's all our republics to fight, and we just don't have the, the means to do so. Like our our position in this place is just so god awful. Oh, that, oh my god. Where's then actually got that RSO? Huh? Zunikinian? Zunikin? Zunisin? Uh, Confederation? Looks like public union, so. Code love. Evolutionary model. Yeah, just you, know, you never have enough. Especially while how behind we're on technology. Oh my god. It's so bad. It just takes so long to research. We're such a backwards nation. Not good. We really want to carve the future through the end. Let me see what this says. Holy Crusade against communism. I like that. Finish the dam. Which is next? Oh, stop the retreat. That'd be nice. The long for soldiers to prepare for this day, every Griffin and Pride knows the final struggle uh, of our time is approaching. A massive crowd gathered in front of the royal palace, listening to the king's final speech before the ultimate conflict would begin. When Clazu appeared on the balcony, the crowd erupted in a fanatical cheering, willingly or not, with members of the Golden Guard being far the loudest, most enthusiastic. The king became obsessed over time, and the balcony creaked under his, or obese over time, and the balcony creaked under his weight. But never knew it would be a bad idea to pay attention to it, lest any awaken his wrath. Clazu cleared his throat and spoke, fear in his voice, my dear subjects, the day we have been waiting for has finally arrived. The day begins a quest to save the world from the plague known as communism. Our nation suffered greatly from this disease, but now has been cured. It is our duty, therefore, to aid others and save them as well. Indeed, I will not rest until the cancer of communism has been excised from this world. If we simply sit here, letting our nations, other nations fall under red claws, we will regret our uh, lethargy when the communist horror crosses the border to liberate us by taking everything we own and installing a puppet to rule over us. Therefore, we must march. March onwards to a glorious victory of the most wicked foe in the history of Griffonia. Those who die will become martyrs, the heroes will receive remission from their sins. The gods themselves are on our side against godless, evil godless enemy. And with gods on our side, who can possibly help to stand against us to war, my dear subjects, if God wills it? The crowd exploded and cheered some, shouting, God willed it loudly and over and over again. Members of the Golden Guard fired gunshots in the air. Eager to fight, close to smiled, proud of his nation, death of the Red Venice. Foreign policy, launch crusade against everybody here. Well, I mean. I guess we'll have to use, use, use even more consequences because this is dumb. And. Communists or not, can we just, like, say the communists and just go to war them anyways? G declares a crusade against communism. Several. News reports from across the world witnessed a peculiar event in the capital of Broadfield earlier today. King Clozu had a speech to a huge enthusiastic crowd where he uh, declared a crusade against all communist nations of the world, saying the gods themselves were on their side. Compared to communism to cancer that spread and be cured before war was too late, considering how devastated pride when was after the Civil War, the opinion was somewhat understandable. And then a speech said that the gods will it, which has now become a common model in the nation, shattered by soldiers and civilians alike as they prepare for the final struggle. Death of communism. Well, I mean, no one's communist, god dang it. Doesn't mean they have to be. Oh, crusade against communism, non corp pony power, production methods, training town. Uh, clean clothes zoo, uh, sanctioned by Prelate Denali, has declared a holy crusade against communism. The god wills it. I want to go to war, but like, bro, we suck. And there's like no communist nations around us. I mean, yeah, it would be cool to core all this stuff, but still. Um, let's just wait and see. We'll finish dampers, repair our wells, of course. Uh, hire workers for our Timosaur mines. Many miners of Timosaur joined the communists during the Civil War and they returned home as a result. The mines are in sore need of more laborers, which we must provide. Few skills are required, so we can easily hire many unemployed and impoverished griffins who lost everything in the war. We'll pay them decent wages to compensate for the great danger of being a miner, of course. Modern tools. Steam powered tools are effective, but they must be replaced with newer, better tools, uh, fuel, powered by fuel and electricity. Modern water worker can accomplish more than 10 backwards workers in the same amount of time. Contracts with Wing Bar will ensure an ample supply of tools for the new age. Should be nice. My god, we're so far behind, it's not funny. Um, the River Ferry? 
Come sabotage my ruin most of regular roads, but the watery highways of nature are invincible rivers. Water corvettes uh, laborers repair the road network, while investing ferries and river patrols. This should ensure, ensure regular and safe travel along the great uh, holy Evie River. Evie River. And I guess we'll do... It's not bad. More textbooks, less propaganda probably next. More research speed be very nice. Royal City at Timosa Road. Progress repairing damaged roads has gone well and so fact that we could start building new ones. Uh, we plan for a wide paved road from the city to the isolated mining town of Timosor. Timsor. The way we'll be able to cut through the thick, acute river or forest, but there's nothing our stout corvette laborers can overcome. Royal Convescent City at Railway. Another infrastructure project we'll begin is in our blessings king's honor as the Convescent City Railway. For the purpose of its kind of pride when while the EV River already stands or provides an excellent route of transportation, there's no doubt that modern trains are much faster than ferries and have a higher capacity. We get a new sign, new new age, uh, new modern age of Prywin. Reinforced concrete. While concrete has been uh, using Prywin for centuries, Mason of CDS says that mass production of steel allows us to adopt superior reinforced concrete with it. And the sky's not the limit when building new constructions. No longer shall earthquakes make our homes and bridges collapse. New standards and regulations will ensure the correct production and use of this miraculous composite material and begin civilization. The capital of the Principality of Convescent is now the capital of the Kingdom of Broad Fell. She will once again become the most civilized city in the realm. The King shall welcome our intelligentsia back home, ensuring that the private one is now safe and then by foreign teachers as well. Emissaries from abroad will surely be impressed by our sophistication, as long as they don't leave the city limits, that is. And yearly science fairs. Mason and Tuatis promote that propose that we establish a yearly science fair. Our students will form uh, teams and work together on a science project which uh, shall then present at the fair. The most groundbreaking presentation will receive a royal award. This will not only allow us to find, uh, find talented griffins, but also popular science and motivate our students. Secrets buried within. Do they get to old or rejected mail letters? You can notice a strange triangle-shaped envelope. Out of curiosity, you open and read the following text. Here we stand. TQDQ... Uh, oh, oh my gosh, and those are all sorts of letters. See letter for a while. Good infusion. Uh, I'm not sure if that does anything for us. Secrets buried within. I don't know, junk mail, wonderful. Let's go with this one. Hey, maybe we'll see Secrets. what happens. Mysteries unseen. You're heading to your personal quarters after a hard day at work in the office as you approach the room. You notice the door is, of course, wide open. Did the foolish chamber maid leave it like that? You'd scold her if that was the case. Inside the room, they lit by a curious candle, you see. A strange but familiar triangle letter lying, lying on your nightstand. Some has somewhat hesitantly, you open to see what's madness contains time. A whole bunch of characters. Please leave your answering code in the same sapphire under your bed, remember? Using uh, parallelograms to define a fine transformations, maybe a mixed blessing. A crow cause outside the window. You move, king. I, uh, I like the exclamation point. We're going to go with and exclamation now, point. now, just for funsies, we're going to go with casa, and we're not going to do well over here, which I ex expected, but, you know, uh, just to see what happens, you know, because this is one nation that we can go to war with over here, or if they were communists or not, but, like, just see if there's anything, like, over there at all. I have a small airframes, but this point doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you're not doing very much. Go. Go. Fairport. Fireport? Fairport. Um, so overall, not bad. I mean, I, I wish... I really didn't know this nation at all going into this campaign. But I wish I knew about it more, so I would never chose mobile warfare, but it still works for now. No, it's not great, but whatever. Repairing there. Also took that navy from the other group, too. Let me get over here. We can close these guys off. I did build up a supply base over there, but, you know, whatever. Um, come on, come on. Just kill them all, please. That's all I gotta do. Come on, and... There you go. Uh, y'all probably won't head that way. Force the attack. Force it. Force it. Oh my god, they're so... They volunteered some Kingdom of Bears. Are you kidding me, bro? Well, yep. Looks like we're gonna do this then. That's so stupid. Try that. That's so, 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 so stupid. No majority vote for the those guys, huh? Support weapons. Fancy pants. Look to the office. Uh, grab some of that. Over there. Now, why are they attacking us here, like now? Bro, game. Okay, I can't put a fort down. It's because the stupid divisions are way too freaking close. Oh my god. That's so stupid. There you go. Well, you're getting out of there then. Go over here. See what you can do. Hopefully, we can do okay over here. Here we go. May I'll try.
And we have a landed. Good. Good there. Good there. Nice. And we want to get over here because civilization's nice over there. Just like that. And reinforce concrete. A fifth research saw, which well is just not enough. I mean if we really wanted to, we probably could make it up for it, but like whatever. Bro, come on. Come on now. Come on, boys, get over there. I don't supply socks, but still. Well, this is stupid. I hate this. Well, I think I'm gonna have to well after that I'm struggle to fix session, which seems like this entire campaign's been one hell of a struggle session. Uh, that's pretty much it. I, I guess there's nothing really here. Um, it just kind of sucks. I mean, you, you build all this up and you get nothing out of it? I don't know. The Confucian Empire is looking huge, and there's no way I'm going to ever try to challenge them, so. Regardless, I think I'm in the campaign here. There's not much else for us to do. But if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.